Hi, my name is Paul. In this video, I'm going to make pancakes. I'm going to make them two ways. One is with regular white flour, blueberry pancake mix, and one is with wheat flour. From time to time, I may cut into the video with pieces of information related to it because I wasn't able to say it when I did the video or I made a mistake. So be aware that sometimes I'll interrupt to say something I need to add to the video. Hi, let me interrupt this interruption for a moment to say something here. This video, where I was originally going to do the blueberry white flour pancake mix and the wheat flour pancake mix, ran so long doing the white blueberry pancake mix that it's already too long as it is. So I'm going to put the wheat one in part two. So that's why this is called P Birth of a Pancake Part Volume One. If you remember Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. The first one ran so much longer than I intended to that the wheat flour one will be done in Volume 2. And so some of this opening for the people that didn't see this one will be shown again in Part 2. So be aware of that. So anyway, now I'll return to the interruption where I left off. Anyway, let me continue from here. I discovered a few things while making this video. I learned that the Orgreenic is not as non-stick as they claim. I learned that there's a big difference between wheat flour and white flour and cake mix. So anyway, let's get started. What you see here is a three and one half ounce ribeye steak sold by Greenbrier International at their Dollar Tree stores. Now, there's nothing wrong with this steak. It's perfectly fine. What I did was I threw two of them in a microwave. I think I threw them in for like four minutes because um, they were frozen solid. That's solid enough that it'll knock the cam over. This is a hard piece of frozen meat. So I threw it in the microwave for a couple minutes and it thawed. Okay. Then I threw it through the two of them into the organic frying pan and it created a film. In effect, some of it stuck. The liquid actually did. Okay. So that was sort of an interesting note. This this steak didn't because some of the liquid that was in there got caught to the pan first but it caused a film over and that film solidified and the film stuck to the pan and that was only the second time I used the pan so I knew there was something suspicious here so anyway let's go on and show you what happens with the pancakes now remember I'm cooking these pancakes and it's only the third time I've used this pan since I bought it and I did season it according to the instructions before using it. Different grades of pancake flour will have different quantities of water. This one here, perfectly fine. It's nice. It works. And it wants three quarters cup of water to one cup of flour. Okay. What are some of the things I need? In no particular order, they are the white blueberry flour, or if you were going to make pancakes that you were going to put fruit on them, then you might just want a plain buttermilk pancake mix instead of a blueberry one. Since I'm not going to do that, I will end up using blueberry mix, so I'm going to show that for the rest of the video. But you have the choice. If you're going to use a white flour, you can have your choice of a fruit, added flour like the blueberry mix or you can use a buttermilk flour like this one. Spatula to turn the pancakes over and to take it out of the pan. One cup. Oh my arthritis is killing me. One quarter. Pancake syrup. If you like jam or jelly or preserves you can use that instead. A bowl to mix this in. I need a fork to stir this with. I need a plate to put this on when I'm finished. 
And of course, I need this. A frying pan to cook it on. This is the uh, organic pan. And of course, I need cooking spray. What? I don't need cooking spray? Oh, let me introduce my friend. This is Mr. No Buzzer. He's going to warn you or he's going to warn me whenever I say something that's wrong. So you're saying that I do not need cooking spray. Okay, who's the cooking spray? I also need butter or margarine. No, I'm not using it to cook with. I'm using the butter or margarine because I like my pancakes with butter on them. That's okay, isn't it? Oh, let me introduce you to my other friend. That's, that's Mr. Yes Bell. He says when I'm doing the right things. Isn't that right? Thank you. Okay. Have I forgotten anything? How about a kitchen stove? How about if I throw in the kitchen sink? Yeah. You know why I need the kitchen sink? Because I will mix my ingredients, especially the dry ingredients in here. And when I'm finished, instead of leaving a dusty powder all over the place, I leave a dusty powder down the sink. Then how do I clean that up? Exactly. So remember, you can always throw in the kitchen sink. Thank you, Mr. Bell. What I'm going to do is to make it a little bit easier, at least I think it is, is I'm going to take the bag out of the box. I'm going to take the bag, scoop the stuff, and then, then I'll put the bag back in. So I need a cup of flour. If I find that it's easier to do it from the box, then I'll just go back to that method. Or I might just try it both ways to see which is better. And enough of this. I'm going to go, I'm going to stop for a moment. I'm going to go get the tripod and set this up so I can just film it. And then I'll, I'll fill a whole cup and then I'll come back to it. Now what I'm going to do is, since I've got more than enough, I'm going to scoop it back in the bag. So let's hold it over the bag. Now we don't want to waste that much. A few tablespoons fine, but let's try not to waste huge amounts. So anyway, take a little bit here. I don't know how much is going in the bag and how much isn't, but it's close enough. Whatever it is, it's close enough, okay. There we got one cup. One cup of mix. When I put this back in the box, I want to have a little dust leaking around as I can. Try to reduce the amount of mess. That's not bad. No mess on the counter. Half a cup of water. Three quarters of a cup of water. Stir. First we want to get all of it wet. As I said before, when this pancake mix is ready, it will be lumpy. The main thing is you just get it wet. Means you're going to stir it. Make sure you scrape the bottom so that the stuff on the bottom doesn't end up with dry spots, which happens. Lumpiness is caused by dry spots, but you never get, you know, short of running it through a mixing blender. And as I said, at least this is correct. With this, it mixes the consistency of cream of mushroom soup. 
with this not wheat. So the wheat is much thicker. There you have frying pan and a plate. Now, turn this on medium heat, about four. I'm gonna take some butter and coat the plate. This butter's been sitting out for a while, so it's really, really soft, which is, for my purposes, is perfectly fine. Hi, I'm gonna interrupt for a moment. If you saw my previous video where the pancake stuck to the orgreenic, you'll know why I stopped the video, reseasoned the pan, which means you pour oil on it, you cook it, you cook the pan with just the oil on it until it smokes, then you let the pan cool down and wipe wipe the oil off. Then the pan's been reseasoned, and so this is what I ran after I reseasoned it again. Okay, back to the video. I've got the pan on four and a half. It's been reseasoned since it stuck the last time, despite what they claim. I'm going to give it about 30 seconds so the pan is hot. Okay, I have put 80 seconds on the clock. I'm going to scoop out one quarter of pancake mix. Pour it into the pan. I'm going to get started on the timer. That's going to run for 80 seconds which is what I did the very first time I used this. I ran them for roughly 80 seconds. You know, not 90, a minute and a half was a little too long. I found 80 seconds was just right for the blueberry pancake mix. The idea is in the minute and 20 seconds that this is cooking, the pancake should dry up on the top. It helps to make it cook faster. And uh, the outside should turn okay. Two, one. That's exactly what it was. After you use the pan once or twice, reseason it anyway, even though it says you don't need fats or oil. It doesn't hurt the pan. You know, just rerun the just rerun a cap full of oil on it, throw it on, heat it up till it smokes, wipe it out and it'll do a whole lot better even though it says that it's non-stick it works better if you give it just a little bit basically you give it just a little bit of grease so that it will work better oh I need to time this one now there you go so you can see it cooked on both sides and it's nicely browned and it does slide so that's the answer. So now you know. Despite what they claim on their packaging, the Agrinic stuff will stick to the Agrinic after you've used it once or twice. So what you should do is, if you've used it once or twice, re-season it. Throw a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of oil, maybe a little less. You just want to coat the surface enough that it will go in there. The first pancake gets 80 seconds on the pancake gets 80 seconds on one side and about the same on the other. It helps if you have a timer. I found that 80 seconds works fine for the blueberry pancake mix. For thicker pancake mixes, it still seems to come out the same. You may want to try it a little see what you get. If you find out that they're turning like rubber, you need to cook them longer. You find out they're turning like charcoal, you need to cook them less. And if you find out they're bursting into flame, don't use alcohol while cooking. This is exactly how I tended to see them. They tended to turn, all of the liquid tended to drain out. Okay. Yeah. And it is sliding. And now there's been no added extra butter. There was one capful of oil used a few minutes ago in which I poured the capful in, heated it up till it smoked, then wiped it out. They should probably say that you should do that every couple of uses. It seems to work better if it has a little bit 
Oh boy, Lon. Since I've been sitting here talking again, I'll do one minute on that side. You can see, definitely slides. But completely nonstick. Don't believe everything you read. In fact, once this is hot, you may not want to do the full eighty seconds. You may need to practice with your particular batter and uh, heating conditions because if you're heating on electric, of course, you're going to get entirely different results. And of course, a thicker batter will make a difference too. I'm going to try this on 60 seconds. It is slippery, I'll tell you that. It's done. I'm going to turn this off for now so that I can try the pancakes. I'm just going to cut open one. See how they are, whether they're cooked. See, so now you can see what all three of them look like. This is the one I just made. It needs butter and syrup, but it's fine. Actually, I'm surprised to say it's a little overdone. It's actually not bad overdone. It's just that, you know, it's not that real light, light thing. I mean, it's nice and golden brown. Of course, that could be that I'm used to eating I'll open my mouth clear first. It could be that I've been eating pancakes that are raw. And so not realizing when a pancake is fully cooked, it uh, has a slightly toasted taste. At least working without... I had nothing on this. No butter, no syrup, no nothing. be a whole lot better with butter and syrup, but it's not bad. Even bear. Let me try a piece of the first one I did. This one I noticed is much softer. So it may have to do with the content of the thing. I'm just trying to eat this in a hurry so I can give you an opinion. It's perfect. It's perfect. So, the green is a nice pan. It's $20. Bought it at Rite Aid as opposed to buying it over the over the air. And um, it works. Just uh, don't listen to their instructions. Use a cap full of oil and season it after every couple of uses. Pour it on. Let it get hot. Wipe it off, let it cool, then cook. After you use it a couple more times, so you wash it too much. Now, if you notice something sticks, re-season it. Anyway, my name is Paul. Thank you for watching. I was going to do the wheat pancakes next, but I realized this video has gone on so long that I'll do the wheat pancakes in another video. Anyway, again, my name is Paul. Thank you for watching. If you have comments, you can leave them here or email them to me at this address.